we were planning on doing a little, little discussion with that too during this time. I do want to read a quote though real quick and give just a real quick personal uh, background on this. Um, this quote, I'm not 100% sure who said it, but I saw this um, and I did look it up. Uh, I wasn't able to catch who, who, who said it though, but it says, it is difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends upon his not understanding it. Okay? Um, and, and that really struck me when I saw that because I thought of that really pertained to the levy. How can you guys want to hurt the teachers and hurt the kids? I want to say right now we don't want to hurt the teachers or the kids. Okay? We've dedicated a lot of our hours and a lot of sleepless nights to trying to protect the teachers and the kids at our school, as I hope other schools are also fighting to protect their teachers and their kids. I was a former educator. I understand that. Um, and something a little bit close to, to that statement to my life is um, my, my wife works at, at um, St. Rita's, and we decided not, we didn't want her to get the vaccine. And we were fully prepared, okay, we were fully prepared to lose her job, have to sell our house, and get a smaller house and make adjustments. But that's okay. That, those are all things of this world. That doesn't matter. We were willing to make some sacrifices. And, and, and again, you might say, well, Ryan, that's easy for you to say. These aren't your kids. My kids go to Elida, okay? Um, I live in Elida. I understand what voting no could do. There's a big could, though. What it could do, now the school, if it does fail, they could reorganize and reallocate funds um, and, and come up with a game plan to, 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 to weather that, which they've done in the past, by the way. We've, we failed. My mom, um, she was a teacher at Elida forever, Cindy Laurent. Some of you had her in home ec, maybe. Um, she lost her job at Elida because of a, a string of failed levies during the 90s. And guess what? We weathered it, okay? Um, I'm not advocating that the school fails. I'm not advocating that we hurt our kids. But the reason why, okay, so people ask, why did you put that on there? To get eyes on this issue. No one wanted to listen to us. No one wanted to hear us, okay? Which you would think having opposite sex in the bathrooms would be cause enough to have eyes on this issue, but then all of a sudden, now we start to attack the levy, and now we go, okay, that's fine, okay? You can come after us, and you can be mad at us, but at least there's eyes on this, this issue now, okay? No one wants to see the kids hurt. No one wants to see the teachers hurt, but those things, okay, could happen. Yes, co things could happen to the school. They'd have to cut some things, Maybe some te teachers' positions would have to be cut, which would be horrible. We were willing to sacrifice my wife's job for what we believed in, though. Okay? And I'm not trying to make myself a martyr. Those could happen. You, you see those words, could? The lawyer at the, the board meeting um, used the words probably, could. Those, those, those phrases were thrown out. Guess what's happening right now at Elida? Girls are being affected in the locker room now, not could, not down the line. In fact, I do want to bring up a mom real quick because I think this will help me make the point of what's happening now. Um, there's a mother um, whose daughter is in, um, in the middle school, and I'd like to give her a real quick testimony. Um, and, and, and what that d will do is I think that will prove a point of what's happening now. Not, okay, if we vote no, this could happen, this could happen, this could happen. What's happening now from this policy that is being allowed to, to happen in our school, okay? Um, so if I could real quick, and then, we're, and then I'd love to discuss the, the levy issue, but if we could have her come up real quick. Is that okay? Okay. Um, this is very tough for her, so please just give her the respect um, to, to tell her testimony um, about her daughter in the middle school right now. Hello. Um, my daughter is in the seventh grade at Elida right now. Um, she is a straight A student. This is the first time ever she has not made honor roll because she is getting a non-participation grade in gym. She's refusing to um, dress in front of a transgender um, and she's not getting a participation. She has to take summer school now. Um, and then another thing, she got set to the reset lab not too long ago because she could not change her menstruation um, materials because she was being timed. How many times did she take the reset lab before then? Twice. So it's not like she's there on the regular? No. She's not. Yeah, the other time was she refused to do an assignment, which... So she, she's afraid to use the facilities and it took her extra time. Yes. Is that a fair characterization yes. of why it took her longer? 
um, yes, in the restroom. She says she does not like to make the noise, you know, of opening those. She does not like to, you know, be in there with other people because even though every woman goes through it, she does not want to, you know, let other people know that she is on there. <laughs> And the, yeah, because she is taking summer school, she cannot qualify for Algebra 1 in 8th grade. Which she did already, though, correct? She did already qualify, yes, but she cannot take it because she has a failing GPA now. Thank you. Yep, thank you. So those things, it's not like they could happen, okay? They are happening. Um, yes, if we vote no for the levy, th bad things could happen, okay? Um, but bad things are happening now. And, and we've been trying to talk to the school board for a, over a year. I went to them for the first time um, last February and asked for explanation of this. That was 2022, okay? And, and we haven't had an answer yet. Um, and, and we're doing, and we're going to, we're going to cover all the legal stuff. We're doing our due diligence. We're doing what they asked us to do. We're doing the dog and pony show. We're trying to get it changed at a, at a state level. Um, it, it, Jody's going to talk about that. Um, we're trying to do this, guys, but it's happening now. So I, we're open to suggestions. How do we get the board to listen? Um, you know, I know a lot of people say, well, it's the law and you can't do anything. Well, again, we're going to talk about that, why, why that's wrong. Um, and so... Yeah, the levy is a touchy subject. I get it. It's, it's, it's teachers' jobs possibly at stake, possibly at stake. Um, you know, maybe classroom cuts, things like that. Um, I weathered them in the 90s. You know, my family weathered them. Um, we were, my wife and I were willing to, to, to stand up for what we believe in and lose her job, too. Um, no one wants to see any of that happen, but no one also, no one wants to see a child um, in the middle school, a, a, you know, an Algebra one student, an honor roll student, now be failed because she doesn't want to be um, in the bathroom where she feels uncomfortable, which is unfortunate. Yes? Um, several years ago, the levy failed at one point, and nothing happened. Everybody said, oh, this is going to hurt the kids, and the programs are going to be lost. Absolutely nothing changed. Six months later, they put it back, back on, and it passed. Yeah. But, but our goal is, is not to put the screws on the school and hurt them, hurt the kids. That's, that's not the goal, guys. We, want to, we would love for the school board to come to the table and say, hey, how can we make this work for all 100% of the students, you know, instead of the one or the 99? Like, why are we having those? We don't want division. You know, we've been, we've been called bigots. We've been called this, that, and the other. We want this to work out for all 100% of the students. Um, so I'm voting my conscience come uh, May, okay? I, I, my, my, my dollars will not support something I don't believe in. Okay? And we've seen that out in the community, you know, or across America, actually. We've seen that with products. Um, we've seen that with services. Um, you know, it seems like, unfortunately, now everything's reduced to a dollar. And that seems like the only way us conservatives get our voices out there is through our dollar. So I'm going to vote my conscience. I encourage you to do the same. Okay? Whether that's for or against it, I think a lot of us believe the same, but I don't want to. Force, you know, people, I think when we put it on the, 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 the flyer, people thought we, we were going to force people to vote no. Like, that's insulting to people of the community as if they don't have a mind. That's just to get eyes on this subject. People have brains. They can make a decision for themselves. We're not forcing anyone to do anything. We're not going into the voting booth and forcing their hand. People will vote their conscience. And the school board, hopefully, will do the right thing before that happens. But I think at the school board meeting, we kind of saw that. So uh, that's kind of where we stand with the levy. It's, it's, it's kind of cut and dry. Um, vote your conscience. Um, but Angie, I think we, we, we will open it up for a, some discussion. We have a little bit of time, correct? Um, and and I'm, not a, I'm not a levy expert by any means. I'm just a dad that's, that is going to, again, vote my conscience come, come May with the levy. Um, but so I'm not a, a, a expert at all, but we can ask questions and then we can try to answer them as a group. Come on up. Sorry. As a former teacher, I did not explain that too well. That was okay. my fault. 
I didn't think I was going to get the opportunity. I'm thrilled to death that I do have the opportunity because there was some confusion when I spoke last time. Three minutes wasn't enough. It's kind of like the Paul Harvey thing. Now here's the rest of the story. I was a school resource officer at Elida last year. Last year there was an incident where I was standing outside the bathrooms, girls, boys, in a complete deputy's uniform. A young lady came from the girls, went into the men's or boys, came out. I made an inquiry as to why. I was called a transphobic, uh, an MFer, up one side and up down the other. This child just went off on me. I behaved as a professional, called for assistance from the administration. They came. After the child left me, I asked them to please come with me to the principal's office because she said that's who told her it was okay. Let me correct that. That was the assistant principal's office, okay? Halfway there, she chose not to go with me, continued her rant about calling me names, okay? She ended up in the assistant principal's office because the social worker and the principal at that time that's no longer there took her there. I went into that office when she was there, the superintendent was there, and I said, if that child is here tomorrow, I won't be. He wasn't able to give me an answer about policy. That's why I spoke at the school board meeting, I say, saying I can't talk about a policy that I didn't know about. And that time, neither did he. He just kind of threw his arms up in the air. My statement to him was, if you can't protect these children, then I can't either. I feel sick to my stomach that that high school has no police officer in it. I was the first line of offense. I'm a retired police officer, had been retired for more than 15 years when they asked me to go to work there. I didn't want to go to work there, like I said, okay? It was through prayer, it was through men's group, and I still kept fighting it. I said, God, I don't want to do this. I was interviewed, and the three gentlemen that interviewed me, when I told them if I have to offer prayer, or scripture these kids, you can't keep me from doing that. I thought that was my way out. I really thought they would say no. Well, they said yes. And like many of us, you know, I looked up and said, God, you got to be kidding me. I really don't want to do this. <laughs> but I did. That was a door that God opened for me. <sighs> Pardon me. But the door got closed, and I'm sad about that. So after I was, I told them that I was leaving, and I, and I left that minute. Gathering my stuff. These kids, need, these kids need cops in there, man. You read across the country. These kids are dying. And Elida doesn't have a first line of defense anymore. They just don't. So anyhow, that's the rest of my story. Um, you got to open the door. And, and like you, uh, Mr. Lorenz, I was losing an income. But you know what? I didn't care. Who, who cares? God said, you know, grab your stuff and go. I know he provides, and he has. You know, I don't need nothing. Uh, you know, I, I don't. He provides for me. So that, that's the rest of my story, all right? That, that's all. Thanks, folks. Thank you. I'm glad we got to hear the rest of that. Um, I knew there was more to that. Um, <laughs> No, uh, and, and I think that just adds to this story. Um, you know, it, on the flyer, there, there wasn't just, the transgender issue with the bathrooms is, I think, the biggest issue. I mean, you know, um, and, and I think sometimes with the school, especially the teachers, they're a little surprised that we're making such a big deal about it because this has been going on for a while. And so they're like, well, why are you guys now just getting up in arms about it? It's because we had to find out about it. We didn't, they didn't tell us. It's been going on at least two or three years, guys, at Elida. What has taken so long for the community to gather and file the lawsuit against the school for child abuse? We just found out about this. Um, and so we're, 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 we're uh, Jody's going to speak on the legal of this, and, and that's why we need to bring the communities together, not just Elida. I hope, how many do we have here from other communities other than just Elida? Guys, it's coming for your schools, too. So we got to stand. I love it. I love it. Um, and we got to do it with a loving heart, too. I think that's so important. We're, we're getting called bigots and, 
Just because you stand up for the word of God, you're not a bigot. Okay? God called us to put on the armor of God. Um, you know, he didn't tell us to put on the nice word of God. It's the armor of God. We're, we're going to say some nice things, but we have to fight this. This is a fight, though, not of flesh and blood, okay, but of the evil of this world, guys. I would love to get together with some of these students that are affected, the, the trans students, and just, just talk to them. Introduce them to Jesus. You know? Um, because they're not the problem. It's, it's this world that's a problem. And, and, and our school district needs to, we need to come together. Okay, we need to come together. And, and do I want to see the children and the teachers suffer? No. But wh- why is it that only when we threaten the levy do they, do they even kind of perk up? Because only politicians understand money. Unfortunately, you're 100% right. And so that's why I'm going to consciously... I'm going to speak with my money come May, okay? All, of, all you, you guys can do is vote your conscience too. Um, we're not forcing any, we're not going to be at the polling places in May, and we're not holding your hand down, okay? But I think there's, there's, there's enough like-minded, good, God-fearing people in this community that will vote their conscience. Um, and our school will survive just like it's done in the past, just like my wife and I, we, you know, uh, I just thank God every day that they, they, they brought the, the people in here that fought the mandates, and, and now God is bringing an army to fight this evil. Um, so I know we didn't really answer any questions. Anybody ever have any questions about the levy? Thank you for that, though, Paul. I really appreciate that. Okay, I think we're going to turn it over to the next topic here. Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks Ryan. Yeah. I'm Dr. Robert Nydick, and the issue of gender dysphoria and so-called transgenderism is a critical uh, issue in the country. And as Ryan mentioned, this is not about any individual person. This isn't about a kid at Elida or a kid at this school, or a kid at this school. This is a wicked, perverse ideology. Okay, this is an ideology that includes all sorts of associated ideologies, and this is a culmination, this transgenderism. In reality, there are men and women there are males and females this is reality this is where we live men have an x x y and women have a uh, x x chromosomes if you have a y chromosome in general you're a guy if you have a y you're a guy this is how reality works and the fact that this group of evildoers in the media, in the schools, or wherever, tells a child that they're in the wrong body, that they're not right, that they feel not right, that if they take this drug or they cut this off, then they'll be okay. That's wicked. That's absolute demonic wickedness. And these children are being tortured. In fact, they're being hunted. They are being preyed upon by people in powerful positions that know this. They all know this. Propaganda. This is, this is pure propaganda. That a boy can become a girl. A boy can't become a girl. You can get drugged up. You can get cut up. You can get made up. You can get changed up, but you're just a drugged up, made up, cut up, changed up boy. That's it. And it's not about the individual boy or the individual girl. These poor souls, they suffer because of the actions of the people 
that are propagandizing them. The people in the media that's propagandizing them, they are the ones that are suffering. You can tell that they're aiming for the kids. And this, gen it's called gender dysphoria. It's painful. It's a process inside your brain. You can't see it. It's like depression, anxiety, anorexia nervosa, bulimia. In the 70s and 80s, it was anorexia nervosa. The world had never seen that. It started in the West. Girls started with anorexia nervosa. But that was different because people realized that that was a body morph morphologic dysphoria. In other words, they had a body image incorrect assessment of their body. And people tried to help them. So if you take the anorexic equivalent of what people like to call transgenderism, for anorexia, you say, yeah, you're fat. You need to lose weight. You need to get a liposuction. No, ra no person would say that to someone that has anorexia. They say, you're hurting. You're, you're really hurting. How can we help you work through the pain and the suffering and the mental anguish that you're going through? What can we do to help you come to know that God created you? Come to know that God loves you. Come to know that you are as you were created to be. How, how can we do that? So what's happened is people come alongside and instead of telling them the truth, tell them the lie. And this is huge. This whole woke agenda, this whole woke ideology, this whole thing is built on a foundation of lies and more lies and more lies. And at the bottom, death. Okay? So what I think we can do is to talk to our friends and our neighbors because vast numbers of people have herd instinct. You have instinct for food, you have instinct for sex, you have instinct to be part of the herd. This is an instinct that has been present in everybody. People don't like to be outside of the herd. So when all, when all their friends and when everybody's agreeing with this, people don't want to stand out here alone against the herd. But the herd and the movement and the demonic forces that are pushing this thing forward, we need to stand against that. We need to get out of the herd. You know, they have, they're pushing, pushing, pushing. The next thing is now the World Health Organization, you know, basically saying that pedophilia is fine and, and all these things. Okay, this is in the news now. And the drag queens with the little kids. They're going for the kids because satanic, demonic activity always goes for the kids. Look at Molech in the Old Testament. The worship of Baal. This ideology is wicked. Now, some people might say, well, you're hateful. I don't have anything but sympathy, and I would try to help any individual. We have to separate out the ideology from the individual. The individual is caught in a trap, which turns into a compulsion, and it turns into a situation that they're very hard-pressed to get out of, as would be alcoholics, compulsive gamblers, or others. So I think it's very clear that we, that love Jesus, need to try to minister to individuals while at the same time calling out a perverse, wicked ideology. So as Ryan said, this is a spiritual battle. In Ephesians 6.12, and I wrote this down as not to butcher it. 
For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's where we're wrestling. We're not wrestling against school boards and middle school kids and this. That, they, they are being used as pawns by those that have control of the international microphone and media. They're being used and abused and then they'll just be discarded. So we need to try to help individuals and at the same time we can't support things that are evil. There's right and there's wrong. Even if you are listening and you, you don't want to say anything because you don't want to stray from the herd, there's right and there's wrong, and there's many more times people than this that know that it's wrong that a girl is a girl and a boy is a boy, and no matter what you do, you don't change a girl to a boy. A girl can feel like a boy, and a girl may indeed convince themselves that, that they are, but they're not. So we need to continue to fight for truth. Jesus said to Pilate when he was being examined prior to his crucifixion, Pilate, there's a famous interview with Christ. Pilate said, you know, he's interviewing him, and Jesus said, I came to testify to the truth. No one else has ever said that. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So Jesus wants everyone. He accepts everyone. You come as you are. But he is the truth. And he made flesh. He was made flesh and dwelt among us. So we need to proclaim the truth boldly. Um, the other issue is that this is medically a social contagion, meaning a virus is medically contagious. This is socially contagious. When you promote this at your school, when you promote lies, when you don't stand up and tell kids that this is wrong and that this is a lie and we are not going to do this, this spreads. This is spreading like wildfire all over the country. And it's spreading in part because churches, because of individuals, because of us, because of herds of people that don't speak up. We need to tell the truth that if you're a boy, you're a boy. If you're a girl, you're a girl. If you're struggling with your sexuality, millions of us have struggled with that as we go through teenage, and you come out on the other side, 95%, you figure it out. But they're not given time to figure it out. They grab them when they're five, six years old. Nationwide Hospital in Columbus, Children's in Cincinnati, you understand this is a multi-billion dollar industry. Multi-billion dollar industry. And it's projected to grow about 20% a year. You understand this is just money and numbers to big pharma. Okay. This is a big industry. And who lobbies your state house? Who lobbies our representatives? Pharma, big money, lobbyists. It's, it's up to us. To, to continue to spread the truth so that the kids know. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 6, Jesus says, But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. This ideology is causing many to sin. That's a very stern warning from the Lord Jesus. So we are here to try to help support 
communities. This isn't about Elijah. This is, going, this is in Shawnee, this is in Bath, this is in Spence. This is everywhere. This ideology is the doctrine of demons, the perverse ideology, and it needs to be called out. It needs to be pushed back hard on, or else you know, we won't be able to say that we did our part while we were here. In the book of um, 2 Timothy verse uh, chapter 3, verse 12, 2 Timothy 3, 12, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus. Well, so it doesn't say all Christians. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus. So the fact that this pastor, Dr. Tim White, let us use this church, that is, that, that, that's amazing. That amazes me. I mean, I, I, he, he's actually living out the, the risk of persecution. What little persecution that we get in this country anyway. And Christ says all that live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. All. So sometimes I think about what have I suffered and it's not a long list. So I think that we need to speak with our friends, our neighbors. We need to try to encourage them to not follow the herd and take a stand on righteousness, take a stand on truth, with the aim being to push back on a wicked ideology and to help vulnerable children. Thanks. Hello, I'm uh, John Solomon, and I can't say thanks enough for everybody that's coming out and who's joining us online here tonight. It's good, uh, good community out, out, uh, outcome and support. It's, it's been great. So I'm uh, John Solomon. Uh, you guys probably, a couple of you have probably seen some of my videos and, and uh, help get some of this information pushed out here. Um, what is on my part of the agenda here tonight is... Um, Sunday we met and this was their second meeting it was uh, my first meeting attending was the Allen County Committee on Safety um, what this is is a group of group of Patriots is getting together and um, this was written in our Constitution that that this committee and I'm still learning about it and and I'm going to invite you guys to come with us and learn uh, if you're interested in learning about it, please come up, see me. I'll invite you. Uh, LaDonna Royce is here. She's, she's part of it, too. Um, come up and see us. We'll get some contact info. They're meeting on Sunday at uh, 1 o'clock, so I'll give you some contact information there. But anyhow, uh, there's a couple of things that, we're, that they're able to look into as far as their surety bonds. Uh, the board members have to have bonds to be on the board. Um, the plan that they have right now is they are going to uh, send a request to the school board and they're going to ask for a signed, certified, notarized copy of their oath. Um, also with that, they're going to ask for their information on their bonds. Um, they have five days to respond. Um, if that doesn't, if they don't respond to that, then we send them a letter of intent. And basically that gives them, you know, more time to respond. If they still don't go to that, then they get an affidavit. The school board members won't answer to anything unless it's an affidavit. So we need support. Um, there's about 15 of us there uh, this weekend. We'd like to try to double that this weekend. We'd really like to get you, the community, involved in this. I said it last week when I was up there. This, we're, every, this counts on everybody in this room, everybody that was in that room Tuesday. 
We need people to stand up, get involved in this stuff. Otherwise, it's just gone. And also, uh, urgency. We're coming into the time of year where everybody's wanting to go on vacation. School's about out. If we don't stay on this and we don't stay on the school board and get together, learn as a community to figure out how to fight this, it's going to go. And then next year when it comes back around, then everybody wants to pick up where it's left off. We're going to look like a laughing stock. So we have to stay persistent. We have to stay passionate. We have to stay respectful and professional. So, um, but I do, I strongly urge you to come, come get with us here after the meeting. Let's help get involved uh, as far as, you know, learning, learning together, get the community together. Um, LaDonna, do you have anything you wanted to add to any of that or uh, more than welcome to come up and speak on that too? Good evening. Um, thank you. A committee of safety is not just for this issue. And I want you all to realize this. A committee of safety involves numerous issues. So if you have an issue in regards to something jurisdiction wise, or um, maybe you have a problem with medical insurance or something to that nature, a committee of safety is developing to help with all of those issues. And like John said, and right now, I agree, this is immediate. This is immediate. But nothing, nothing happens like this. And you have to realize that. But you also need to realize that the more people that get involved and get behind this issue, the better opportunity you have. A committee of safety is not about revenge. It's not about stick it to them because they're sticking it to us. That's not what it's about. This is a committee of safety that gets back to the grassroots. The people are the government. And if we don't take our government back, we're not going to have any government because we're on the road to communism is what's going on right now. Many of the issues that are, are of really major importance right now are issues that will, in turn, lead to that if we don't do something. So I urge you to come and see what this is about. And one of the first ways that we can do something about this is you need to stand up. You need to speak out. And yeah, you need to get involved. And that means that we need to be writing our congressmen, be writing our senators, calling their offices. Heck, I used to call some places so many times that all I had to say was good afternoon and they knew who they were talking to. <laughs> Just by the sound of my voice. Yeah, it's unique, I know. But that's what it takes. Because the government thinks that the people are so dumbed down that we're just going to say, oh, yeah, it's okay. It's not okay. And it's not going to be okay for our kids and our grandkids unless we step up. And the Committee of Safety is one of those ways. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to ask for their bond and their oath. And they all have to be bonded because they were elected. So they have to have a bond, whether it's individual bonds or whether it's a blanket bond. And I would venture to say it's probably a blanket bond, which covers the whole school board. But I don't know yet, but I imagine it probably is. We're going to give them five business days to respond to that, which means they need to turn over that information to us. We then will contact their insurance and their insurance is going to know, obviously, because we've already asked for the bond. So where does it come from? It comes from them. So they're going to be freaking out, saying, you know, some of these people may be bonded for millions of dollars. So if they see that we're going after that, and they see that they may be liable for that money, do you think they're going to sit on it? Well, if they do, they're stupid, point blank. 
you give them a certain amount of time to respond, and then you, in, in that process of those days, you need to be reaching out to their office, you need to be sending them an email, hey, I'm still waiting on this, so they know that you didn't drop the issue, that you are indeed going to pursue this. So that's our number one step. And what we would like to do is we would like to be all set up, very professional, and ready to go at the next school board meeting. Because then there's no way they can say, oh, I didn't get it. Because it's going to be presented to them right there. Yes, ma'am. The reason you're going after their bonds is to get them off the school board. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, and the first thing you want to do, obviously, is make sure that they did sign an oath. And part of their oath is to uphold these things, their policies, protect our children. So, not just one. Where's our next meeting? Next meeting. Sunday. Oh, uh, Sunday. Um, our meeting is at the American Legion at one o'clock. And that's a committee of safety meeting. And we would really hope that as many of you can get involved in that as possible. I understand there are lots of other commitments. I get that too. So, and you know, everything takes time. So if you expect an instantaneous result, it's not going to be instantaneous. I'm not going to lie to you. But you all know that. You've worked with the government in some form or fashion or another. But if we don't start and we don't keep after it, we're not going to get anywhere. So, and it's like I said at the school board meeting, you know, this isn't the example that I want for my kids and for my grandkids. I freak out thinking I have a two and a half year old do uh, granddaughter and I think, you know, I certainly don't want to be in the restroom with some person that is a male or whatever they profess to be. But what's going to happen when my two and a half year old granddaughter goes to school? I, I can't. I can't even. I can't even imagine. All we can do is our level best. But I want to be one of those persons that stands up and says, "Hey, I did something. I tried." Thank you, Ladonna. So with that committee of safety, um, yeah, and, and like she said, that's not only for school board members, that's for any elected official. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, can you repeat the time and date? Yeah, it is Sunday. i um, not sure of the date. It's this coming Sunday at 1 o'clock at the American Legion at uh, uh, Lima. It's there on South Medgap. Yeah. The 30th? Okay. So, yeah, I, and I'm sure everybody in this room wants to hold their public official accountable. This is a great start here to help do that. So, yeah, we need to get as many people involved in this thing as we can. So, we're power in numbers. Because, um, you know, all these elected officials, including the school board, they forgot who they work for. Exactly. Yeah. So... And, you know, I said there last week, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to make a run here at school board myself. I don't forget who I work for. You guys got a problem? You bring it to me. We'll straighten it out. I, I, that's, that's how I want my elected officials to work for me. That's how I want to work for you when that, if that day comes. So, but this come to mind today, and I wanted to bring this up while I had a moment. One of our forefathers, Patrick Henry, stood next to Plymouth Rock in 1776 or 1775 on March 23rd and he said give me liberty or give me death in our pledge of allegiance the very end of it says in liberty and justice for all liberty for all not just one percent or the less than one percent that we're up against here right now so, people, please stand up, get involved in this, speak your mind, get to more of these meetings, and let's, let's get after this, because this isn't just the children that we're connected to. It, 
people don't have to have any connection to any child. Keep in mind that we're talking about generations of society here. And, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's going really bad right now. So let's see what we can do to get it straightened out. So thank you very much. Thanks, John. Uh, Jody. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. I'm Jody Vasky. I spoke um, at the school board meeting, if you were there, on Tuesday. Um, I'm just kind of helping with the committee. Uh, there's about 12 of us that are um, helping to spearhead this and get the community organized. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about who I have spoke with um, over the past week. I've had numerous phone conversations uh, through the State House, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about that. Um, I do, did want to talk, uh, did want to start with uh, some scripture, and that is uh, come up in our, our pastor had, uh, in his sermon, preached a little bit the week, uh, the Sunday before our school board meeting, and some things really that pertain to our school board meeting, and uh, Colossians came up, and it says, uh, three, Colossians three twenty three work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. So I just kind of want us all to keep that in mind um, as we're going about this and as we're individually each kind of working uh, towards the, the main goal here, and that is to just protect all of the kids. Um, it's not, I, I was approached, kind of what brought this scripture to to mind was, I was approached by a board member before they went to their executive meeting um, when I, when I stood up, my daughter was there with me. We stood up to go wait because I knew that we would be able to come back after the executive uh, session was over. So I said, "We're going to stay." Um, she said, "Everyone's leaving." I said, "Nope, we're going to stay because they'll come back." Because I have attended most of the school board meetings since uh, moving my kids to Elida, so I knew uh, that we would, they would re-meet. Um, Anyway, this board member approached me and made uh, the comment that what we are doing this here today and coming to the school board meeting and speaking was causing division between Christians. Um, when the Holy Spirit, I must have had a Holy Spirit moment because I kept my mouth shut and I don't, <laughs> I was telling our youth pastor this weekend, I kept my mouth shut and I don't usually, my mother's here, she'll tell you, I don't usually keep my mouth shut. So, uh, I kept my mouth shut, but I thought a little bit more when I went home about that statement. And I just wanted to say to everyone here, we are not creating division among Christians. Right now, what, what that meeting on Tuesday showed me and what this shows me tonight, that we have Christians who are following the word biblically, seeking biblical truth, uniting to proclaim that truth. I saw many, if you were there at the school board meeting, you saw, what, 25? And did we have, I think, probably 24 that were, spoke God's word on that stage? Um, so what we have is we have Christians who are not followed, following a watered-down doctrine or being led astray. We have Christians who are following the word and seeking truth, working together, uniting. And that's what that shows me again tonight. I uh, spoke with David, and I want to say it's Mahan or Mahan. Someone maybe can correct me. Uh, J uh, John Geisey? Yeah, Mahan. Mahan. Okay. So David is with the Center of, uh, for Christian Virtues. You can look them up. They have a Facebook page. They have a website. Um, he actually reached out to me. Pastor Roz had got a hold of me and said he wanted me to meet with David. Um, David has been wonderful for, our, for what we're all doing here tonight. He has put me in contact with people at the State House. He's in and out of the State House daily. Um, so what he kind of 
wanted me to reiterate to the group, and I was going to do a Facebook post, but I thought we'll talk tonight, and then I'll also put it on the Facebook post, but we're dealing with three laws, three actual laws. No matter what the laws or case laws they're throwing at us, we're dealing with three actual laws, and that's God's law, which says there's male and female, right? And then there's nature's law, which says that women, it's science, have, like Dr. Set, the XX chromosome, and men, the XY chromosome. That's, that's nature's law. That's your biological makeup. That's something that is not going to change. Um, oftentimes, the question that can be asked with that is, can a child or an adult, a human, who is born as a male be a female? And you can't answer that any other way, but no. Um, so that's nature's law. That's what we're dealing against. And then we're with again up against man's law, which we know man's law right now, the big piece of man's law is Title IX. Um, that's something that all of you have heard, Title IX, Title IX. If you're at the school board meeting, Title IX. That's what you heard. Um, so basically, look into Title IX. What we're kind of up against with Title IX is there's pieces of it that say um, your orientation based on your actual sex. I don't see gender identity anywhere in Title IX as far as uh, that's what they're basing it on. There's another uh, law that you can look up in Title VII. That is misconstrued and with, and you'll look in the Bostick case if you look that up, they tried to misconstrue the two. They tried to use Title VII against Title IX. Title VII is employment. Title VII has nothing to do with students or, or anything. Title IX does say that I can't go to Meyer or any other public restroom and go in the men's restroom. So why on earth is this being thrown at us at our school? If we can't go into Meyer or a public restroom, under Title IX and walk into the opposite sex bathroom, why? Now, we couldn't ask that at the school board meeting. We didn't get asked to ask questions. We just got asked to speak for three minutes, as someone else mentioned. Um, so just some things if, to put some knowledge in, in your brain so that when you speak, you can speak educatedly. Um, along with us meeting David, he has reached out to um, Angela King uh, with, with our house. Um, I will be meeting with her. She does want to have a meeting with me um, at, at the state house, so I will be doing that. Um, she has, was actually received, it came back to me through David. She had texted David and told him that he re she received emails specifically to her about what's happening at Elida, as did Matt Huffman sat at his desk last week in the State House and discussed what we're dealing with at Elida. They are not against us. They are for us. Um, just a clarification there. Um, Angie does want to meet with me, um, so I will. She also forwarded that to Manchester. I, I don't know how far we're going to get with Manchester, but I'm guys, I'm here. I'm going to tell you I'm going to poker ear. So she will hear from me. Um, but I do believe that Rob McCauley is another gentleman that David said hears us, he's for us, and I will be meeting with him as well. Um, they are getting me in with him as well. So just so, just so you guys know, we're not, I know it's not, the politicians, it's, it's really difficult to either nail down where they stand or um, have them speak truth. Um, Bethel schools, uh, we're going to talk about, they, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Bethel schools, is everybody here familiar? They had this same incident um, after, after speaking with a mom who is uh, on the federal lawsuit that they have. She um, told me that they actually have a little bit worse situation than what we do. They have a teacher who is in the school who is... Um, I mean, what we hear the term grooming is what I would believe. She's holding meetings for these kids. They have a, a pride community club, LBGTQ club, confusion club, as 
you know. Um, and she's, she's the ringmaster of that confusion for those children. So she actually um, pushed the child, is what Bethel School's parents are telling me. I've spoke with them personally. Um, she's pushing uh, the child to say they want to use the opposite sex bathroom um, because they're transgender. So um, they are in a civil lawsuit and a federal lawsuit right now. Um, they started that, and I'm going to explain a little bit about how they got uh, to where they're at quickly. They started petitions. They did a petition drive in which they would run it just like you would a fundraiser drive. So that's something that we can all keep in mind. Um, they gave me the, uh, the petition that was drawn up by their attorney. They suggested that we have one drawn up by our attorney, not... Um, done on our own because they did their first one on their own and they had to redo it. So before you go through, you know, they were telling us before we go through getting petitions and whatnot, um, we want to make sure we have that legally drawn up. Um, they also gave me, emailed me the copy of their lawsuit, their civil lawsuit, and that was what that petition was for. The petition was to remove three of their school board members. Three of their school board members were not for the community, we're not hearing the majority. If you were at our school board meeting on Tuesday, you heard the majority, um, overwhelming majority. We had students, we had elderly in the community, we had parents, we had grandparents, we had community members, we had cousins, uncles, brothers, friends, neighbors. It was just a beautiful thing to see that auditorium full, completely full. Um, so what they had was something like what we have. They have a very interesting, diverse community. They have a very large Muslim community, as well as a large Catholic community, um, and other uh, Protestant and Pentecostal denominations. So they have a very large, what I would consider Christian um, community. They all band together um, to, to take this on the civil lawsuit. So the civil lawsuit was requesting that three of the board members step down. Two of those board members are done here in November. So now they've got the one on their lawsuit that they're really concerned about. But they, um, as you know, uh, Ryan said, we vote with our dollars. So they are voting, uh, it's unanimous, uh, voting those two out. So now on their civil lawsuit, they still have the three on there. But they are going through that. So we have those copies. Um, we have the copy of the petition. Um, I also brought with me um, Representative Jenna Powell, their state representative. Um, she wrote a letter to, for them to give to their school board um, and just saying that, you know, the accommodations uh, didn't have to be included as the kids, were, those, the, the, com the gender confusion, the gender dysphoria, however we want to say it, does not have to use the bathroom of their choice. They can use the private bathroom and be told to use the private bathroom. We're hearing from other area schools. Um, I know that people have reached out to me and said that our school board needs to get in touch with Clay Bowyer, I believe, from Shawnee School Board, um, which Mr. Collier, I spoke with him after the school board meeting. I was there until 11 o'clock that Tuesday night, and he was very open. Um, if we want to rally around any of our school board members, it would be Mr. Collier. He was very open. Yes, it was very reassuring. He was very respectful, very soft-spoken with me and the other moms that were still there. He said that he wants to hear, he wants to be put in contact. So I am going to reach out to him and tell him to get a hold of Clay. He wants to, if, if anyone here, I know there's other community members, if you know of any of your school board members who have said, we ain't doing it. Mr. Coyer would like to speak with them. He wants to be able to approach the board with how they are going about it and how they are getting around the liberal attorney guidance, because that's what it is. Um, it's guidance from liberal firms. We've looked up the firms. We looked up the firm that spoke, that they had on the smart board at the meeting that was not a representative of our school board, but a, I think they were trying to bring them in because I had already pointed out to them they were taking legal counsel that was liberal. Um, they brought in that, the lady. She It was still what... I don't bluntly interpret it as liberal counsel. Um, 
So they, uh, this, there are representatives in the house, and Angie is one, Rob is one. So I'm going to try to get us a letter, just like they got at Bethel, um, to give our school board members any kind of, I think, that kind of leverage that we can present to them. Um, otherwise, an alternative to what they're hearing from their legal counsel. Um, I also was given from Bethel, uh, one of their attorneys in their attorney firm, um, which is Ennis Britton, is their attorney firm. There was a, a conservative uh, attorney on that firm that gave um, advisement to Mr. Ferks, who was their superintendent and is now our high school principal. Um, I have that documentation, and it just um, is their attorney's conservative, uh, I would say, language as to um, how to guide them on how to handle the, um, the children wanting to use the opposite bathroom. Um, another thing that has been brought to our attention through the contacts that I've made um, is the Neola clients, uh, who, who, which I believe they said Elida does use Neola. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, they have a big, uh, it's, it's basically a titled Addressing Legal Issues Concerning Transgender Students and Employees. Um, it throws Title IX, it throws Biden's executive order, which we know um, to be very clear, when I spoke with them, with uh, David at the State House, he said there is no federal law, there is no state law, and there is no local law. Right. <laughs> Just to e help educate myself and you guys as well, um, he did confirm that. So again, this is case law. Um, they're throwing at us that case law is what gets upheld in um, hearings, supposedly. But what I found very interesting, and as we're doing our homework here, this the team of us 12, um, we'll dig some of this up, more of this up. But what I thought was very interesting from the school board meeting is we only heard about cases that were um, followed case law that said that the students could use, indeed use, the bathrooms. And, and one, we didn't hear any cases, and they are out there. David has, and, I, and I, like I said, we'll do our homework and get those lists here. Um, we're just kind of in the beginning stages of all of this. But to, to get, compile those cases that have one um, is something we need to do to be able to take back to our May meeting. Um, so I think other than just kind of what um, Dr. Nydick said and, and um, Ryan said, and John said, you know, this is definitely a bigger agenda. I fully believe it's the Antichrist agenda. And if we think that any of this is going away anytime, any soon, it's not. And if you're from another school and you think, well, we're not going to put up with it, or it's not going to come to our school, it is because this is way bigger than any of us. It's a spiritual war. Yes, LaDonna. Yes. I have, what I have is, I have the actual petition, and then I have the um, the civil lawsuit, which is, you can find that online. I have the case number, um, everything, if, if, I guess. Yes. Yes, when we do get a petition prepared, um, their instructions to us was to have a legal counsel approve, have an attorney that we can get to um, approve. What I was really hoping, um, we do have some some donations that you know I know people are have already offered to donate. But I'm really hoping that if if you're here tonight and you know uh, an attorney that you think would be willing to um, look at this uh, petition to remove this one is particular is to remove school board members. Um, you know I would. I would say if we could get an attorney to help us, we do have some funds, but um, not everything, not everything we would probably need. But if we could get an attorney to maybe donate some of their time, be the hero in the community, yes. Any attorneys in the house? So no, not, not tonight, but you may know an attorney or just, um, 
I'm just throwing it out there that if we could get maybe legal counsel to help us get started, I think it would, like I said, you'd be the hero in the town. Um, yeah, LaDonna. Yeah. So what Bethel, um, what, how they started is, they started that just um, a people willing to walk door to door, kind of like we did with the flyers. Um, we, they also did drives, which are um, basically they'd have someone that they could use a parking lot, a church. They said they used all kinds of people come forth and said, you can use my business or you can use our church. And they would, um, they even set up a, a, a space to register to vote. So because you can't sign the petition unless you're registered to vote, you're a registered voter. So they had, they were so wise with all of this, they had a little station set up where you could register to vote. Um, they did a whole drive, she said, just on that, strictly just getting registered to vote. Um, but then they would do these petition drives, and she said they did several of them, where you could just drive through. They'd hold their um, clipboards out. If you were at the Allen County Fair this past um, summer, you might have seen the Medical Freedom Team um, there, which some of you are here tonight, um, getting petitions signed. So there's different avenues that we could do that, um, but definitely what they suggested that worked, uh, was very helpful, was to have a petition drive. And you just drove through, and they you didn't have to get out of your car. They hand you, you know, there would be people volunteered to hand the clipboard um, and get, get signatures. So they had several different ideas um, that we can, we can go about that. Our first step would be, though, is to get um, it legally drafted because they, they did their own. Originally, they were trying to handle everything on their own, again, for financial purposes and whatnot, and they, it got thrown out. So they had to start all over on the petitions. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? I know uh, I will just give one example. Yes, John. Yeah. Right. Yes. And he said he's pretty receptive to uh, what the community has to say. Yes. Right. You voted yes. Yeah. And um, interesting enough, when I approached him, the moms and I approached him and said, you know, you voted yes. That was to let the kids use the bathroom of choice. And he said, no, it was. I mean, as serious as a heart attack. No, it wasn't. Um, which I told. Yeah. So my thing that I took from Tuesday night um, was there was confusion amongst the board. If you were there, you saw Mrs. Asiago. Is that how we, Agazino? Um, look in front of everyone, look at the board and say, what is the resolution for? What is the resolution? It's a resolution or a policy. And they say it's a resolution, not a policy. Right. Okay. So that's what I took. Yeah. Yes. So we had, my point, we had confusion on the board amongst the members. We had some that seemed to maybe not be um, under full knowledge of what was going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that wasn't just my opinion. That's what we all witnessed. Um, we witnessed it that night. Yes. Yes. Mr. Bowers. Does anybody here know him personally to know? I'm sorry? So Bowers was not there. Um, I don't know exactly how he stands. Um, am I sure? Does anybody here know him personally to know that oh. you've spoke? We just don't want to hear okay. hearsay. Okay. Okay, he's so he's. Uh, yeah, Jason. He's a he's a good man. He's on our side on this issue. That's a good question. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry. She's saying, how can how can um, they vote with a board member missing? 
And that's an excellent question. They are, in the policy, they are allowed to vote without a board member. He, that, they have to be physically present to vote. Regardless if he's there or not, they have to be physically present. They can't vote proxy. So because he wasn't there, it, it wouldn't have mattered anyways. They're all gonna vote yes. Again, they voted yes on the resolution to save their insurance policy, the school's insurance policy. So guys, I've got a little bit of an insight about the insurance policy um, with the school. Um, so to keep their insurance on the school, they had to vote on the resolution, yes. So if the school burnt down, they have to vote on this yes to, to get the insurance money on that. The insurance is also holding them liable if they don't follow federal law, and notice I use air quotes, federal law, insurance won't cover them. But there is no federal law. <laughs> but that's what, but it's, again, I'm just, what I'm saying is What they're going will, by, their counsel what they're, they're going what, by. What, the insur what insurance is going by, and I'm not saying school, I'm going insurance. Insurance is going, the school's insurance is going by is if you don't follow this law, and again, I, I, again I, I know there's no federal law, but insurance is saying there's law, they won't cover ELIDA. Does that make sense? They can't, it's all, it's all the insurance. Insurance representative there to affirm that. I can vouch for the insurance company and the policies that they do. Um, David's over here nodding his head. I think he understands what I'm saying. It, it's all insurance. It'd just be like your car insurance. If you get caught speeding or caught texting, they're not going to cover you for an accident because it's your fault. I'm not trying to defend them, but I'm trying to explain to everybody kind of how it works. You know you were in the wrong for texting and driving, so insurance isn't going to cover it. So now, hold on. I, sorry. Again, it, it, they were doing that to keep the insurance on the school. Man. If that makes sense. These are all great questions that we have. Yeah. So I, th I think the insurance issue is uh, a bit of a red herring myself. Um, I, I don't put any stock in that. No other school districts around here have put resolutions out that they have to defend their insurance policy that you've been paying for. For the, for the last 50 years, and if you do something, you're not going to get covered. That, I, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but, yeah. Yeah, well, that's, 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 that's the real question of, you know, they, they did what I guess they we're told they needed to do and for whatever reasons, but it doesn't negate anything that they did or that we've said as far as, um, you know, doing the right thing. And, you know, again, all the other school districts all around, they're not having issues with their insurance coverage. And uh, I don't think that they're quite at the, at the level that uh, Elite is. So the only other thing I have is Brandon Shea is with the state school board. Um, I'm uh, David put me in touch with him. We've been texting. We're just trying to find a time to meet, but I am going to meet with him. And he is actually um, who helped create the resolution uh, to the state school board um, agenda. So I'm looking forward to meeting with him. He is definitely sees things the way we do and is here to help us. And um, what I'm hearing from David, even um, willing to uh, possibly show up. So that would be helpful because that just helps clarify a lot of things if we could get him to be a guest speaker or something at our school board meeting. Um, yeah. You know, I have one more, one more thing, and it's just a student that had come to me, and I'm not saying any names um, for privacy, but they were, uh, this kind of goes along with what Mr. Basinger was saying. Um, they were in the bathroom uh, last week, 
and the girls' bathroom, and there were two girls. Uh, well, when this female, biological female student walked into the bathroom, there was a police officer. Uh, there are res our safety, res I think they call it resource officer, who is female, um, inside the, bath the female bathroom. And she could tell that she was just listening. And she went on into her stall to do her business, but she realized that there were two females in the stall uh, next to her, one being the female in discussion, the gender, gender confused, uh, the male. Um, so both of those students were in the restroom together. Yes. Uh, this student did say that when they came out, um, this, this student was still in her bathroom by herself and that the um, officer yelled at the students and disciplined them verbally, like, you are not supposed to be in here, you're not supposed to be in a stall together, what are you doing? Questioned them, nailed them, didn't let them go out. Um, that both of those children in that stall were disrespectful to the officer. Um, kept saying, can we go yet? Can we leave? Can we go yet? Didn't want to listen, didn't want to answer the questions of the resource officer. Um, and then that student uh, came out, uh, washed her hands and left the bathroom and saw the resource officer go straight to the office. So, um, you know, I spoke at the school board meeting that I substitute at Elida. I do know that there is discipline there at the high school. That's where I've subbed in the elementary. Um, I do know that this is of concern to them. I do know by what that student told me that they had a handle on that situation. Um, but those two students, if that resource officer wouldn't have seen, who would have known that they were in there? And then that student that went in could have found themselves in a predicament, especially as nasty as they were to the adult. Think about how they are to other peers. Um, they have no respect for adults. It's like if you don't have any respect for your own mother, you don't have respect for any adult. So if they were, didn't have respect for a, a uniformed officer in their bathroom, questioning why they were in there together, one being the student at the, unfortunately, at the center of all of this, um, and another student, you know, um, starts at home, people. <laughs> so thank you for coming out tonight. Thanks, Jody. Um, What's that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, go ahead. There can be conflicts between different laws. You know, a city law, a state law, a supposed federal law, or if it's somebody who has been confused in the law. So a lot of this stuff has to get worked out through the process of being tried and tested, probably even in court, to prove what law actually has jurisdiction and to settle conflicts. I just want to make one comment. I don't know if everyone knows here, but the Board of Education of the State of Ohio, there's a state board of education, and they're all elected. They put out a resolution, and that resolution affirmed the creation of a male and a female and classic sexual identity understanding, and they recommended to the school, to all the local school boards in the state. They recommended, they didn't force, they don't have authority to force local school districts, but they recommended that all the local school districts get on board with their recommendations, with what they wrote on this paper. And all the school boards in the state got their recommendations. They got the resolution. So I don't think that the state school board of the state of Ohio would make a resolution and encourage all the local school boards to follow the resolution that would then lead to loss of insurance for all the school boards locally in the state of Ohio. 
I don't think that that would happen. So just so everyone knows, the state school board recommend, had a resolution that basically agreed with the position of classic understanding that this, on this issue. So that was, their re that was their resolution. Finally, we're gonna try to wrap up in about five or 10 minutes, so appreciate the patience. Dr. Uh, J.J. Shreenan is here to give us an update on Title IX. Dr. Shreenan did run for our uh, local district state representative um, spot, and unfortunately we came up just a little bit short, or I can tell you that this uh, bill would already be on the docket, and there would already be sponsors to prevent this type of confusion in K through 12 local schools, as there's been in Kentucky, as there's been in Tennessee. States all over are addressing this particular issue. So we need somebody to carry the ball, but Dr. Shreenan is staying up on all these things. JJ. Thanks, Dr. Nidick. And uh, man, it's great to see all, so many faces here today. And probably in mid-October, we had a conference. Uh, David Mahan was there. He talked about the SAFE Act, and I talked about Title IX. I was asked tonight to just give a quick update on the Title IX. So what happened was, is Title IX has been in effect for 50 years. It was established in 1972, and it was basically to get equity across uh, women's sports, et cetera, uh, as they go into colleges, the scholarships and everything were the same. Biden, by executive order, proposed that we add gender identity and take out the word sex in that proposal. It's a proposal. Nothing's happened. What happened at the state school board, knowing that this was coming down the line and that this was a possible proposal, Brandon Shave, through a lot of bravery, brought this resolution that would basically recommend to everybody in Ohio, if this does become uh, an order that is put in place, that we would ignore it in Ohio. And initially, that Title IX resolution was brought into executive committee um, by our state representative mom, who's actually the vice president of the board. And so it couldn't be voted on. They were gonna stall it and make sure it didn't get voted on. And I'm happy to say, uh, since that meeting we had in October, we had a lot of response from our district area talking to um, Martha in particular, Manchester, she brought it back out of executive committee. It was voted on and passed. So that recommendation went out to all the school districts, and that was not what Dr. Nidick said. So, you know, getting in touch with your representatives and following through and giving, speaking your mind will change things. The other thing that's really important about that resolution was that it also contains clauses that say the school boards are supposed to encourage their legislatures, their legislators, to pass laws that stop all this and you know it's happening across the country tennessee kentucky all these other states have passed it so we should be on the phone with our representatives saying the state school board passed this resolution you guys need to put a bill in place to stop this and we need to move forward in ohio like so many other states and so that's where we need to go um, just a couple other things there's a couple other bills that the SAFE Act is back on, um, and this is also what pressure does. Last year when the SAFE Act came, so that's the Save Adolescents from Experimentation, which stops puberty blockers and sex change surgeries and all that that is being sponsored by our children's hospitals across the state and all that big money industry, it's back on the docket. Last year, it was in committee um, and Susan Manchester was actually the chair of that committee, and she stalled that long enough that it didn't go through. And she brought it to proponent testimony like with four days left in the session. This year, because of the pressure that's come from this district, she's actually a sponsor of that legislation. So you need to call and make sure that that legislation goes through this year, because that is child abuse. Um, and study after study after study has shown that doing these gender transitions before the age of 18 is 
just the wrong thing to do. They've stopped it all across Europe. They're 20 years ahead of us. They've got all the data. We're fooling ourselves in the United States. The other thing, there's the backpack bill. There's both one in the House and one in the Senate. Senate Bill 11 and House Bill 11. That puts more power in the parents' hand. It's start gonna push the education dollars to stay with the kid. So you know what? The schools are deathly afraid of the parents actually having say who gets their money. You know what? If you want to start having home schools and have big co-ops and home schools, have everybody keep their money. <laughs> and it will be done. So call your legislatures, get pushing on that, because that's the only way we're really going to solve this stuff is start taking the money. And guess what? If you're giving money to Children's Hospital besides St. Jude that just does cancer, stop. <laughs> you know, let them know that we don't appreciate what they're doing. So with all that, I'll be happy to take any questions, but I was just asked to give a quick update, and I want to keep us relatively on time. So, yes, sir. No, they only do cancer stuff, all, but all the, you know, across Ohio. And Johns Hopkins stopped doing transitions um, probably five years ago. Yeah, they actually looked at the European literature and seen that 10 years out from when the transitions took place, the suicide rates go through the roof when they're in their late 20s and early 30s. And yeah, so in this affirmation, when kids are young, it's just grooming. And like Dr. Nydick said, it's a social contagion. Actually, there was just a huge study published out of Northwestern University that some brave soul <laughs> was able to push through and showed the exact same thing that they've seen in Europe, that this is directly related to social media and grooming in the schools that, that's pushing this agenda on our kids. And that's exactly what they found out in Europe. Not, not that it's true 100% across the board, but it can wait till they're 18. And last but not least, <laughs> um, all this stuff does take money. We got lots of different flyers going out, you guys seen. So if anybody's willing to donate, uh, please see Angie. She's got a donation box in the back to help us with some literature, posting things, et cetera. So, <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. So stay in touch with your legislature. It's super easy. Just go on to their, just go on to the Ohio, you know, type in Susan Manchester, Ohio. It'll bring right up her email, her phone number. Just send stuff. It's kind of my morning ritual. <laughs> so, yes, ma'am. It's, it's across the board. Um, a lot of them have been indoctrinated as well, that this is the right thing to do because physicians are telling them that if you don't do this, your kid's at high risk for suicide. But the reality is they're at high risk anyway because this is a psychologic disorder that they need to get proper therapy first before they consider all these things that are life-changing and life-altering. And that's not happening first. Yep. And, and again, thank you guys for your bravery to come out tonight. It's a tough thing to do. As Dr. Nydick said, following Christ, he tells us we're going to be persecuted. So it's going to happen, but he'll be with us. <laughs> yes. Pro bono. Pro bono. I guess what, um, yes, Donna. Yes, sir. Oh, John? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, John's, John's a great guy. He does heart, he does a lot of, uh, he does a lot of adoption and heartbeat. He's a he's a. Save your time. 
He's All right. All right. Yes, yes, ma'am. We don't, we don't have a uh, we don't have a mechanism. Okay, we're unfortunately we're not like you know Obama community organizers here. We are we are everyone. Dr. Shreenan, he's a teacher. We're physicians. We're everybody. If somebody could help, if somebody could help set up something, we, I I don't even have a Facebook account. Okay, so. If someone could help us, we have one through the church. Technology. Uh, we have one through the church. We have oh. the software. We oh. will be able to help you get that set up. The church has a way to donate online. So, so if you want to you. donate to the church yeah. and put in the memo line, you know, uh, trying to help uh, fight evil in in the schools, um, it would probably it would I'm sure it would make it our way. And but, to, that, to that comment from the board member that said that you were dividing Christians. <laughs> to the comment that you were dividing Christians. You aren't dividing Christians. You aren't dividing Christians. You don't have the power to divide Christians. This divides Christians right here. It's the word of God and it's truth. And I would any day rather be divided by truth than united in error. All right. So I'd just like to thank everyone for, for coming out. Oh, I'm sorry. We, you have a question. I'm sorry. When is the next school board meeting? The next school board meeting is May the 16th. It would be a Tuesday. And I think they're at... 7 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, May the 16th. That's when the school board meeting is, and I assume they might have it in the auditorium again if, if this many people are willing to come and let them know what we really think. So before we leave, let me just ask the pastor to close in, in, a, final, in a final word. Yeah. Okay, if I can have your attention real quick. If I can have your attention, I'm not, I'm not going to pray with everybody talking. Very disrespectful otherwise. Heavenly Father, thank you for our time tonight. I thank you again for getting us here safely. Pray that you'll get everyone back home or to their destination safely as well. Thank you for those who are willing to step out. Thank you for giving them the unction, the power to do that, the boldness, the courage. Give us all that. Instill it in our hearts. Let us see this for what it is. It, it, it is evil for sure. But <laughs> one thing I know from serving you many, many years, at the end of the book, you win. And goodness always wins. And so, Lord, we just pray that you prevail through all of this. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks again. We'll take all the help we can get. Sunday at 1 o'clock at the American Eagles. That's, I'm sorry, American Legion. American Legion. Good. Yeah. Yes, wonderful.